Hey, what's up, guys? This is Moogan Lord here, and today we're going to talk about Resident Evil, or I guess more specifically, the animated CG uh, Resident Evil movies that's been released by Capcom, you know, over the decade. And just recently, Capcom had revealed their official trailer to their latest CG animated film called Resident Evil Death Island. And I really want to go over, you know, my thoughts about the CG animated universe that they have going on here, which is also canon to the Resident Evil timeline. And just the crazy liberties that Capcom have taken with the tone of these movies and the games in general, you know, after the classic Resident Evils and just how much the characters are so different than what I've known of them. So before I dive into the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button and notification bell. Uh, for more of my gaming content here on this channel so let's dive right into it okay so when it comes to my relationship to resident evil i'm gonna say this i've been a big resident evil fan ever since it released on the ps1 and i still own the ps1 that big heavy thick box that it used to come in back in the day and resident evil had defined the genre the survival horror genre wouldn't be the way it is if it wasn't for resident evil and we have to give props to Capcom because they pretty much created a brand new genre that many other developers had pretty much took the torch and just farther, you know, advanced, farther developed the genre to what we know today. And we all have to give that credit to Capcom. And Resident Evil has always been in the forefront. And everybody always looked forward to a Resident Evil title, no matter what. But to me, things change for Resident Evil, in my personal opinion, once we have gotten a hold of Resident Evil 4. And I know some of you guys may not like my opinion on it, but I will say this. Resident Evil 4 is a, an amazing game. I own it on the GameCube. My brother recently bought it for me on the PS5. And I give my hats off in respect to Resident Evil 4, because they have also defined gaming moving forward after that release and to me in my personal opinion it also hindered gaming in a certain sense but i can make that in a whole separate video but resident Evil 4 is where everything just <laughs> just went off the charts as far as resident evil is concerned and to me resident Evil 4 marked that change um in resident evil and to me it's not a resident evil game it's a great game but not a resident evil game but i digress so the thing i love about resident evil is the fact is that resident evil despite it having zombies and you know tyrants and all these other type of things like hunters resident evil still felt isolated it felt secluded and it felt grounded now i know it sounds ridiculous but it did feel like hey a zombie outbreak could happen in real life and you felt invested in the characters, you felt invested in the environment, and you it gave you that sense of horror, survival horror, especially when it came to the team, Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Barry Burton, Albert Wesker, Rebecca Chambers. That very first opening to Resident Evil 1, I was instantly hooked, and I didn't know whether or not that the uh, Bravo team was was going to make it out alive once they got into the Spencer mansion and you start unraveling all of these mysteries and these conspiracies when it came to Umbrella as a corporation and I really felt invested in that and then they carried on with Resident Evil 2 which they made it even more personal because now you're playing as two young characters Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy and Leon Kennedy was that representation of you as this rookie or as this new person or player who just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. And Claire Redfield, who's looking for her brother, Chris Redfield, after the events of the first game, she's looking for her brother and she happens to show up at the wrong place at the wrong time. So you're following these two youngsters and you're also unraveling a mystery of what's going on with Umbrella and you find out there's another virus, which is the G virus. Everything about it still felt grounded. And I really enjoyed that. And these experiences shaped 
all of the all, all of the characters. More specifically for me, Claire and Leon. Leon seen some shit. Claire seen some shit after the defense of Resident Evil 2. And I would have loved to see that carry on throughout the rest, you know, of the Resident Evil canon. And then we get to Resident Evil 4. Now, I know I'm skipping Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil um, Cold Veronica. I love them both. But the, to make the drive my point home is, is that we get this major time skip. And in Resident Evil 4, you know, Leon Kennedy is now, he's more in his element. He's a badass and he's more experienced. And then also as Umbrella, as the antagonist, it just doesn't exist no more because they got destroyed not because of Leon and the rest of the team had wanted to fight back Umbrella. No, the stock market destroyed them. Wall Street destroyed them. So it, it just took me out of it. And then once we got into Resident Evil 4, it started introducing other elements. We didn't have zombies no more. It became super campy. All these other things that they just threw in there and it became more action oriented. It just took me out of it. And it just didn't feel the same. And Leon Kennedy didn't feel like the same Leon Kennedy that I know in Resident Evil 2. And even though that time progressed, I would like to see that time progression through a series of games maybe leading up to Resident Evil 4. So then, of course, now we have the CG movies that's being introduced that does fill in some of the gaps that was missing between some of the games and during some of these time skips. And for me, I Resident Evil 4 marked the time that I just totally gave up on Resident Evil now that they went into this more arcade action shooter you know over the shoulder type of gameplay and then Resident Evil 5 and then Resident Evil 6 also maintained and carried that trend to the point Resident Evil 6 was like felt more like Gears of War than anything it didn't feel like Resident Evil and it just took me out of it so when it came to the CG movies I figured that hey are we going to get more of that grounded story once again and oh boy was I the fuck wrong when it came to the CG movies. In, in my personal opinion, most of the CG movies that has been released was just a dog water, in my personal opinion. Per, like, completely garbage. And most of the characters, in my personal opinion, like Jill Valentine, Claire Redfield, and the rest of the cast, they don't feel like their original counterparts that you have seen earlier in the earlier games. And even in the more recent games, it's like there's just like a, a contradiction between um, majority of the characters and how they behave and you know and how they navigate through this world and the things that really messed me up about Resident Evil especially with the CG movies now everybody has a virus now we live in this universe is just a bioterrorist universe where everybody got their hands on some type of bioweapon to gain control and it just took that groundedness and it took that uniqueness that Umbrella has pretty much had as an antagonist i just thought umbrella was a great antagonist it's a corporation that got that has his hands in politics you know and uh, uh capitalism it had it in everything where these this company was pretty much untouchable and that they always get away with these things because they have everybody you know on their payroll and i liked it that at the fact is that we have the underdogs is you know chris redfield and the rest of the cast members trying their best to you know take them down and then all it took was the stock market to destroy it. and then now you got all these other bioterrorists with their own viruses and they just messed that up and the cg movies more so carried into that direction introducing us to other viruses other bioterrorists and when i say they take the complete action that resident evil 4 had have pretty much introduced into the series they took it to a whole nother level and i just think it's fucking stupid like it's not even resident evil to the point like i'm not even afraid of zombies you can tell that like leon claire all the cast members aren't afraid of zombies like it's there's is this one scene in a cg uh resident evil movie where both leon and chris is in the hallway full of zombies and these guys are doing complete backflips and somersaults jumping off of walls and putting their legs around zombies necks without the fear of getting bit and just snapping their necks in half and everything it just it just looks stupid it just looks ridiculous and all because of resident evil 4 had created this trend because resident Evil 4 got so popular 
they was like, you know what? This is something that the fans want. This is this is something that the fans like, and we're gonna just just double down on it. And it just took me out of the whole entire franchise altogether. And then it's this one scene that you you, you would think is in a John Wick movie where Chris is on the pretty much on the rooftop fighting this villain. And these dudes are doing Equilibrium from the movie Equilibrium with Christian Bale. These dudes is doing up close gun kata, gunplay. And they're just shooting each other and missing up close on each other. And they just rolling on the floor just shooting. I'm like, what is this nonsense? Like, like, like it just looked completely silly. Chris Redfield is doing all this John Wick crazy stuff. And this supposed to be a series that focuses around zombies. What is going on here? It just looks stupid. It just baffles my mind. And that's why I didn't even bother to watch the Netflix series. And then when it comes to the CGI series, even the characters and um, designs are inconsistent. Very inconsistent. I think Claire Redfield design looks stupid. It looks horrible. Jill Valentine, who we finally get introduced in Resident Evil Death Island, which I'm about to get into in a second. Chris Redfield, all of them. It just looks horrible. But when we get to Death Island, it seemed like Capcom really went to, you know, double down and, you know, give the fans what they want, which is Jill Valentine. Jill Valentine is one of my favorite video game characters, one of them, of all the time, especially in Resident Evil. I love Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. Both of them are favorite Resident Evil characters, but of course, I love Jill even more. And Jill and Resident Evil uh, Death Island, which doesn't make sense to me, is the fact is that we already seen what happened to her in Resident Evil 5. Now, from what I understand, um, Death Island takes place way after Resident Evil 5. So after after Jill Valentine has been you know infected by Wesker, and she was underneath his uh, his control, her hair turned blonde because of the experiments and the effect, and yet she looks like Jill Valentine from Resident Evil 3 remake. It just it like like the inconsistency of where Jill was then and how she looks now. It doesn't line up. It doesn't match up, and it's just there for pay, to pay homage to. The more recent Resident Evil remake, which is Resident Evil 3 uh, remake, which was horrible. With, like, like I would rather play the original Resident Evil 3 than play the remake. They really messed that up. But they sat, they threw that in there without, you know, ignoring all continuity and everything. When it comes to her look, it just doesn't make sense. And then they also threw in Rebecca Chambers, which she's also a cool character, which for some reason her design looks, she looks crappy her design her face her whole out her whole aesthetic just look horrible look i prefer resident evil zero rebecca chambers over this rebecca chamber and not to mention the animation um within death island just looks horrible as well i, I don't understand why like a lot of people was hyped for this this just look like just resident evil fan service the film like this, this movie is just unnecessary. You, they just took all our favorite Resident Evil characters, threw them in one film, and they all just doing John Wick and Matrix type of moves, which looks so silly. Especially at the end of the trailer of Death Island, they have this ensemble of the entire Resident Evil cast that everybody grew up and known and loved, all in one, you know, picture frame. And it just looks silly. This silly slow motion. Everybody's shooting, flipping around. And it kind of reminds me of the Avengers when the Avengers first assembled in the MCU, where it shows Captain America and Black Widow and everybody just assembled together and the camera panned around them. And it's like that's the type of effect that they wanted to go for when it came to this specific scene. It just looks stupid. You know, you got <laughs> you got Claire Redfield, you got Leon, you got Rebecca, everybody doing unnecessary flips and, and dodge moves. In this one scene, it just looks stupid. And I don't understand why Catcom just doubled down on this, like, stupidness, this silliness when it comes to Resident Evil and its characters and the action that's presented in these films. And it's Resident Evil. Like, a Resident Evil film, is it writes itself. It's horror. It's like they get the live-action movies wrong, and they also get the CG movies wrong. How can you get Resident Evil so wrong? It writes itself. It should be the perfect horror film. It should be the perfect horror series. It writes itself, but they, instead they make them like super, super campy, super, super comic book like, 
and it doesn't to me in my personal opinion it doesn't fit in this universe or like uh, like the seriousness that it once had it's just like they just threw it out the window but fans eat this shit up I, I i don't get it i'm just not a big fan of this and death island even though i love jill i'm not gonna even waste my time watching this film at all it just looks silly and we going through another concept of another bioterrorist once again and not to mention i also forgot the dogs the cerberus the mutated dogs that you that you first encounter in resident evil one leon was literally on a motorcycle being chased by a dog a cerberus being chased by a dog from Re that you would encounter in any resident evil game the dog was able to chase down a speedy motorcycle in which leon was just driving how so if that dog if those dogs are that fast why couldn't those dogs catch up to barry chris jill and wesker when they were running towards the mansion how come they wasn't how come they couldn't run that fast like we see here in this shot right here like this, that just doesn't make sense the, the dog the, those dogs should be overpowered is that if that's the case the dog chased him down the expressway through a tunnel you can't tell me that it doesn't look silly it looks so silly but i i, I digress man like i know I'm, I'm going off on a tangent i didn't write a script for this but it really bothers me when i see these cg films and i'm hoping and i was always waiting for the perfect resident evil film that actually uh uh captures the integrity and the spirit and the essence of the resident evil franchise well the early resident evil um games but no they just they just ham it up they just ham it up and it's just just a shame and i, I don't think you know i'll probably be an old man by the time i'm like 36 years old it's probably when i'm fit by the age 50 they'll probably get it right and that's sad but that pretty much it i just wanted to rant about this i want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below what do you think about the cg uh resident evil films and how do you like how do you think you know capcom you know in the studio handle the portrayal of the characters do you think they're perfectly fine and that i'm just talking out my ass or do you think that there's some merit here what's going on with how these characters and their personalities contradict themselves from the games at the earlier times to the movies and then to the games in a much later time definitely hear your thoughts in the comment section below if you like the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and notification bell once again because like i said before it helps me in the algorithm so much so this is moogan lord signing off i'll see you game fiends later peace out